Oh yeah! This is happening! Ah! Hey guys, Mark here from Ace Card Gaming. If you know me at all, it probably comes as no big surprise that I predominantly grew up playing the classic Sonic games. I mean, there's no shortage of videos on here that make my stance on these games perfectly clear. These games were my younger childhood, and for that reason, they will always hold an unconditional, often biased, and maybe even a rational place in my heart. But you're probably all quite literally sick of hearing me talk about them by now, and it might be time I pull up my big boy pants for a few minutes and leave the mid-90s behind me for a bit. I may have briefly mentioned this in passing a couple of times in other videos, but when it came time for Sonic to make the jump into full 3D, I could not have been more hyped. I used to sit salivating for hours over magazines. Get your mind out of the gutter. Not those magazines. Coming in here, projecting your filth on me. Rest assured, all relevant salivation was over promotional screenshots and early sneak peeks of this hot mama. And me and my friends could not wait to get our hands all over a Dreamcast so that we could spend our foreseeable lives playing Sonic Adventure. After spending the younger years of my childhood completely enthralled with the Death Egg saga of the classic series, the Adventure games, especially Adventure 2, marked a time where I felt that the series was actually growing up right alongside me. Yeah, these games were still made for kids, but the writing and narrative direction was constantly evolving, becoming more and more serious with each game, something I can't really say I get from any of the more recent entries in the series. Which brings me nicely onto the topic of this video, the career of the one and only Ryan Drummond as Sonic the Hedgehog. Ryan was the first English-speaking VA to play Sonic in a fully voiced game, and would continue to play the Blue Blur right up until 2004, when he was replaced along with the rest of his colleagues by the 4Kids cast of Sonic X. But after many years of playing as a mute Sonic in the games, and only Jaleel White's voice to go on across all three 90s cartoons, it was crazy to actually get to hear Sonic finally speak in the games. I mean, yes, was great and all, but this was totally awesome. And I'm going to attempt to explain why Ryan's depiction of Sonic and his performances as the spiky blue ball of attitude during the adventure era were so special to me. For me, his character was actually growing during this era, demonstrating a wider emotional range than anything we're used to seeing in the series today. But this won't be about crapping on Jason Griffith or Roger Craig Smith or anything like that. Each actor who has voiced Sonic over the years has brought something different to the table, and each of them has been subject to very different conditions during their time as Sonic's voice actor, be that recording equipment, voice direction, writing, or overall narrative tone. And while I will compare and contrast things here and there, it's never my intention to put down something that someone else enjoys. I just really enjoy discussing the story of Ryan's career, and this is simply me trying to explain why he captures the character of Sonic so well for me personally. As always, don't forget to like, subscribe, and shovel claw that bell icon in its smug face to be notified when I release more Sonic or gaming content. Those simple clicks go a long way, and any support you guys show is seriously appreciated by me. Anyway, let's get started, shall we? Ryan Drummond was born in Lima, Ohio in 1973, and while he's had a quite varied career, comedian, singer, clown, mime, there was never any question that he would ultimately end up being an actor. Both of his parents were actors and theatre directors, directing plays that Ryan himself starred in throughout his school life before going on to graduate Eastern Michigan University in 95 with a degree in theatre. As for how he went on to eventually become the voice of Sonic the Hedgehog, after moving to San Diego in 96, Ryan landed the role of Sheldon the Turtle in an educational game called The Three Decoders Riddle of the Ring for an education company called Lightspan Partnership. It's actually crazy hearing him speak in this. It really does sound like a beta version of his Sonic voice. But I think this situation could benefit from your observation. What? This cleverly disguised lever appears to be attached to this vine which in turn works with this hidden pulley that is attached over here to a weight. And in a classic case of knowing someone who knows someone, when it came time for Sega to hold auditions for the English voice cast of Sonic Adventure, the studio engineer from his Lightspan gig knew someone from Sega's casting team and recommended Ryan for the job. During his audition for Sonic Adventure, Ryan actually tried out for every character in the game, apparently doing a very impressive Big the Cat. The thought of him actually playing everyone is hilarious. Give Eddie Murphy a run for his money in those Nutty Professor films. 
His audition for Sonic in particular though, was actually really cool. Apparently, he went in completely blind, saying he was led to a recording booth, shown a picture of Sonic, and told if a voice came from that hedgehog, what would it sound like? And the rest is history. So the first line was, pick up all the gold rings and get a free life, aw oh, yeah. And I just said, pick up all the gold rings and get a free life, aw oh, yeah. That ramping up of Sheldon the freaking turtle of all things was enough to impress the casting crew at Sega and secure him the role of the leading hedgehog. Something I think Ryan absolutely nailed in his performance as a Sonic, and honestly something I don't think he gets enough credit for, is how he honed and refined Sonic's cool, carefree 90s attitude into something that would work in the series as it broke into the new millennium, and move towards a more serious narrative. Ryan bridged that gap in time, and spoke to a new generation of Sonic fan without alienating the old ones, all while still keeping that undeniable 90s charm. All most kids had to go on at that time for Sonic's voice was Jaleel White after all. And while the man did have some impressive range when you compare the likes of the Adventure series to Sat AM, I'm not sure how well his portrayal of the character would have worked in Sonic Adventure 1 or 2. As for Ryan, I would find it pretty hard, if not impossible, to judge him solely on his first performance as Sonic in Sonic Adventure 1. Arguably, each new actor that has voiced the Blue Blur has needed a little time to break into the role properly, with their first outing rarely being their best. But interactions between characters in Sonic Adventure could sometimes fall slightly flat, and exactly how much of that was due to the recording equipment, voice direction, or the mad facial expressions and general animation is hard to say. Yeah. Most scenes were created completely in-engine, with stock body movements from gameplay being used, rather than all motion being animated and shot specifically for a given scene. There's a lot of idle stances and vacant expressions at times, and along with the bad mic quality and timing between each person speaking during interactions, this can sometimes slightly take away from the impact of the scene. The amount of truly horrific stuff the characters witness with barely any reaction at all is actually hilarious. That's not to say I don't love them, or Sonic Adventure as a whole. I actually find it charming, and I love the story in this game. It's just less cinematic when compared directly against the games that followed. But like the original Sonic the Hedgehog game all the way back in 91, Sonic Adventure was the series finding its footing in 3D, as well as the methods of story delivery that entailed. But despite everything else, there's no denying the energy Ryan brings to the role of Sonic. None of the, let's just call them production quirks, were an issue for me as a kid. They're just something you notice much later, when you have a wealth of other Sonic content to compare with. But in isolation, Ryan took the 90s and polished it up all nice and shiny for the new decade. But what truly cemented Ryan as Sonic in my eyes, or should that be ears, was his performance in Sonic Adventure 2. I don't care how many times, or in how many universes, that Sonic makes jokes about air travel or airline food. This opening scene is just absolute perfection. Sonic's signature cheeky smile only matched in its awesomeness by Ryan's performance. That smile simply wouldn't work if the voice acting wasn't doing the character justice. And Sonic's character is perfect here too. He doesn't just take being falsely arrested lying down. And whether these guards are the good guys or not, Sonic is no goody two-shoes. When backed into a corner, he opens a can of whoop-ass on them, peels a sheet of metal from the helicopter, and makes one of the most awesome escapes this series has ever seen. When I played this game first, it was this scene that made me realize I was playing another Sonic game that would be special to me forever. Just like that feeling I got from Sonic 3 and Knuckles. And Ryan's portrayal of Sonic is high on the list of reasons for that. The all-round upgrade in cutscene animation and facial expressions that you see here extend right the way through the game, and this pays off big time for helping the cast performance carry a lot more weight, making every scene feel a lot more impactful. The flow of conversation feels a lot more natural, as opposed to just a collection of voice lines recorded in obvious isolation and sequenced one after the other later on. Yeah, there are some slight issues in certain scenes with the dubbing from Japanese to English, but this was never enough to ruin my enjoyment of the game. Sonic's interactions with Shadow during the Faker scene demonstrate the perfect balance of his cocky competitiveness mixed with his more serious side. He wants to beat this fake hedgehog to prove he's the best, but is also clearly pissed this guy's been running around, tarnishing his good name. 
Speaking of Shadow, Drummond is actually good friends with David Humphrey, who was the voice of Shadow in this game, and would continue to be for a couple of years after. And it was actually through a recommendation from Ryan that David was selected for the role, which for me is just madness, because David is my hands down favourite Shadow. Granted, Jason Griffith is a very close second, but it's crazy to think that yet another case of who you know, seen another perfect match for a role, at least in my opinion anyway. The lack of any meaningful involvement from other characters in the stories of the more recent games has had the side effect of causing Sonic to lose any and all opportunities to display his leadership qualities. In these games, Sonic can delegate meaningful tasks to his team, tasks that are important to the narrative, and these are a great way of demonstrating how important these characters are. Only Knuckles has the skill to break into the pyramid base, and while reluctant to be the one to do so, with some encouragement from Sonic, he goes ahead and does it. Tails is now ready to take on a much more active role in the team, and his expertise in technology is second to none. Sonic knows this, and now trusts him with missions of major importance, like tracking down the president, or devise the plan to destroy the Eclipse Cannon using his fake emerald. Rather than just a squeeze everyone into a giant battle scene for no reason, or give them some mundane task to complete off screen, these are missions we actually get to see play out, allowing us to much better understand how important they are, and how the team would have failed without that assistance from other members. The way Ryan Sonic interacts with others, whether friend or foe, always feels natural, and exactly how I would expect Sonic to speak and react. It's confident without being a dick. It's cheesy without being cringe. It's serious without being forced. His portrayal of Sonic can be funny or amusing, without having to descend into slapstick or self-aware territory. Like so much of the attempted humour we see later in the series, that patented Sonic confidence isn't insulting, either to the audience or the rest of the cast. You can always see that he's outwardly confident in every situation, but I always feel this is for the benefit of those around him to keep up morale in the team, but he still treats every situation with the gravitas it deserves. He can mock Eggman without sounding painfully childish, or just completely crapping on him. I much prefer his big time villain comments versus the beating of a dead horse Baldy McNose hair, or joking about how you beat him every time, like it's our job or something. A grand choice between the scripting depth of a five year old, or completely devaluing your main antagonist. That's just shit. Ryan Sonic openly mocks and banters with Eggman, just like Sonic always has, but you can still sense the respect that's there for just how dangerous Eggman is, and that he's genuinely worried about his friends, and what he might do to them. When potentially faced with death, Sonic was actually worried about it here, hoping beyond hope that he could somehow perform chaos control using Tails' fake emerald to escape the exploding capsule. Can you imagine Sonic giving a shit about this situation now? He'd just bawly McNo's hair his way out of the situation and carry on. Same way he escaped imprisonment and implied torture, without so much as an emotional scratch in forces. While still complete cheese, the exchange between Sonic and Shadow before their race to the cannon is still one of the best in the series. It wears its heart on its sleeve, with its stereotypical corny hero lines, yet is still a favourite scene to many fans. And it's this game's writing, along with Ryan's ability to deliver the lines without making me cringe myself into oblivion, that makes me love his portrayal of Sonic so much. His delivery of the news of Shadow's death was also excellent, showing that even Sonic can be somber, and that he has an emotional setting besides just gotta go fast eternal optimism. His heart to heart with Rouge was just fantastic, and I always loved that we got to see a deeper side to Sonic's psyche which really just makes it hard to blame anything on any of the actors, as more often than not, they're just all victims to the direction the recent games have taken. Ryan was lucky enough to voice Sonic when he was still experiencing growth as a character, and that's probably another reason his Sonic speaks to me above all the rest. While Sonic Heroes did mark a crossroads in the series, a time where Sonic was going multi-platform after the death of the Dreamcast, its story taking a much more simplistic approach to accommodate new players. But for all the lines that weren't simply button tutorials, oh my god there were so many, Ryan still brought his A-game to the role, even voicing Sonic's metal counterpart as his only right and proper. For me, Sonic Adventure 2 and Sonic Heroes mark the point where it's clear that Ryan is no longer recording impressions of what he thinks Sonic might sound like like he was directed to during his audition. In these games, Ryan is now completely comfortable in the role, 
and when he speaks, it's now naturally as Sonic. Drummond balances Sonic's carefree, happy-go-lucky charm, with also being perfectly serious when he needs to. And it's that simple but evident range of emotions he brings to the character that make him such a great fit. And when watching all the various scenes across all the different games, it was the adventure era and Ryan's portrayal of the blue blur that I feel struck the best balance. It actually took me playing Colors Ultimate for the first time to really bring back how important my time with the series was with Ryan at the helm. Not taking away from Roger or anything, but that story and the writing just did not resonate with me. A lot of the time, it even felt like Tails was sick of listening to Sonic speak. Again, this falls back to the point I made earlier, about how the actors are victims or successes of the era they took part in. Who's to say how awesome Jason or Roger would have been had it been them who voiced Sonic during the adventure era? Either way, I'm just happy to see that Ryan is still ticking away and voicing Sonic wherever and whenever he can. There was a lot of spin a while back saying that Ryan had completely lost the ability to do his Sonic voice, based on one time he was blindsided during an interview and did a less than perfect Sonic. A lot of performers from a lot of different disciplines will tell you, being put on the spot with no prep time can really throw you off. And seriously, he has shown time and time again in recent years that he is still perfectly capable of nailing it. Anything requested of him during his interview with the Kitsune Network was awesome, and Sonic and Tails R is absolutely amazing. Getting to hear Ryan as Sonic working with Jason as Shadow was an absolute treat, and really reminded me just how much I miss both of these guys in the games. But Ryan's passion for playing Sonic is plain as day for all to see. Even though the guy was completely hard done by by Sega when it came to handling the recasting of the games with the four kids actors, even though he felt he was completely disrespected, he still has his agent put his name forward any time there is an opportunity to voice Sonic again. And he still goes to Sonic events all around the world and takes part in projects like Sonic and Tails are. The guy loves being Sonic. And as it happens, I love his portrayal of Sonic. But what about you guys? What are your thoughts on Ryan Drummond and his performances as the Blue Blur? <laughs> Based on polls I ran here and on Twitter, clearly I had no idea where people stood on Sonic's voice actors. So be sure to let me know your thoughts on everything in the comments below. If you enjoyed the video and would like to see more like it, maybe on other voice actors from the series, be sure to drop a like and post who you would like to see covered in the comments. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more Sonic and gaming content. A big thank you for watching. And as always guys, take care. It